credit card balances are surging. Here is an article from CNBC. The tally of total credit cards exceeded 500 million units for the first time ever, led by originations by Gen Z ages 18 to 25. This affects the people watching our channel significantly. Overall, an additional 233 million new credit card accounts were opened in the second quarter, the most since 2008. What happened in 2008? Big recession. Credit card balances also jumped 13% during the second quarter, the largest year-over-year increase in more than 20 years. So why did this happen? Well, in my opinion, inflation. When you look at inflation and it's a sudden change, sudden surge in costs, what are people going to do? Uh, let me go to my credit card. Now, I believe in credit cards. I believe credit cards should be your emergency fund. I don't think you should be pulling back on your savings to go invest, to take away from your investment. Emergency funds, exactly for that, emergencies. It should be rarely, rarely, rarely used. That's why you have credit cards. When you see this, you're not seeing emergency funds being used. You're seeing people relying on credit cards to live their life, even though they still have jobs and their wages are going up. That's a problem. To me, Blaming this for economics problems, it's like blaming going to McDonald's the last time you went there before you had a heart attack. No, it was decades and decades of poor eating. That's it. This is decades and this is this spending, having bad spending habits. So if you're watching this channel and if you're new to us, I'm Paul, I'm a value investor. My goal is to look at the data and try to uncover what's really going on there. And in this situation, all I see are, all I see is people who probably live above their means and don't save enough money. And you might sit there and say, Paul, you don't get it. I have, I gotcha. But I know people all across the spectrum. I have personal friends who spend every dollar they make, and I have friends who save a ton of money. They all make similar income. This is how they spend. You're, I read an article recently where it said, I think it was a third of people making $250,000 a year live paycheck to paycheck. So that just shows it has, it doesn't have to do with how much money you make. There's a reason why people who win the lottery are going broke like crazy. It's because their spending habits are wrong. You have to sit there and fundamentally focus on what works. Credit cards are an indicator for you looking forward in terms of what it means for the economy because 70% of GDP is consumer spending. And a lot of people live on credit cards and they just keep paying them and paying them and paying them. You're spending 25% of your money. So what can you do? If this video is a wake-up call for you, I have a very quick suggestion. I can give you double-digit return on your money. How? Pay off your credit cards. When you're paying 10%, on a credit card, hypothetically. As you pay that down, you're giving yourself a guaranteed 10% return. Where can you find a guaranteed 10% return today? You cannot. Okay, even worse. If you have 25%, you're giving yourself a guaranteed 25% return. So what do you do? Start paying off your credit cards from the highest interest rate down. I don't care if your highest interest rate credit card is $300 and your lowest interest rate credit card is 10,000. You pay this one first. That's 20, the highest credit card first. Get it over and done with. That's what you do to save yourself money. You can start anytime. What's another recommendation? Set 15 years ago, I had a friend of mine. He said, Paul, my wife and I have $25,000 in credit card debt. What should we do? I said, what's your biggest issue? He said, impulsive buying. Well, even if it wasn't impulsive buying, because I've been around with them, I'm like, I don't think you really buy impulsively. What it is, is they don't think about what they buy. So I said, how about you do this? When you're about ready to buy something over a certain dollar amount, you guys have to wait 48 hours and you both have to approve the purchase. I'm not kidding. One year later, $25,000 in credit card was gone and they had 25 grand in their bank account. Just like that. I, Tim just said, that's awesome. That's exactly the point. It was a $50,000 swing after taxes. I do the same thing and I have the money. Whenever I want to buy something expensive, I wait and say, because I'm pretty impulsive about buying. And if I think about that item for another a week later, then I'll go buy it. Because even though I can afford it easily and never affect my lifestyle, I still just want to buy stuff just to buy stuff. I want to be in the habit of only buying the things that I want to have. And to me, if I'm thinking about that item later, then I'm going to buy it. These are the examples of how you can live your life. Consumer spending is a big component of, the, of society. I get that. And it's fun to spend money. It's fun to buy stuff. But sometime go in your basement or garage and see all the stuff you've bought. That you're like, why do I have this stuff? I used it three times. I used it twice. I used it zero times. But these things can cause you to sleep poorly at night when you have too much credit card debt. And credit card debt is becoming a problem in this country. It's what happens during recessions. When things slow down and all of a sudden you have no job or your income is, your hours are pulled back, it's got to give somewhere. And you don't want to sacrifice your lifestyle. Guys, guess what? That's life. Sometimes you need to make a sacrifice. When I first started this business, there were months where I didn't pay myself a salary. Why? Because I had to go put a new roof on something. I had to go put a furnace. I just had to do that. That's something that not a lot of people can do. Well, how do you do that? 
you live within your means and you save your money. It sounds simple and I get it. It's not easy, but everyone can do it. I know people making 40,000 a year who save money and I know people who make $300,000 a year who don't, who don't save a single dollar. That's the point. How can somebody making 40,000 a year save money and somebody making 300,000 a year not save a dollar? It's one thing and one thing only. Mentality slash spending habits. That's it. So you have to decide which, which end of the bargain you want to be on. The economy is seeing a surge in credit card debt. You look at consumer debt overall. Car loans are up. Interest rates are up on, on houses. This is going to cause more and more problems as time go on. Now, do I believe the world's flung apart? No. It's just an indication as we go along that things are a little bit different than they used to be. When everything is going well, it's easy to spend more money. Oh, everything's going great. We're good. But when things start to settle down a little bit, then things catch up. When you take on debt to buy stuff, you're sacrificing your future. You're taking away from your future. That's all debt is, is taking away from the future potentially. Now, if you're buying income generating assets with that debt that are very stable, it can enhance your future. That's for a video, a different video altogether. One final thing I want to show you. This is a map of average credit card debt across the country. The dark, the dark ones are the higher levels. Guys, it's no coincidence that some of the highest levels are in, expense, are in the very expensive states to live in. And we live in Ohio, very light green here. And I know everybody's like, oh, Ohio's boring. Yeah, but there's a lower cost of living, less keeping up with the Joneses because of that. And you can live a much more comfortable life without the stress of credit card debt. Does that mean there's, I know people in Ohio have lots of credit card debt, but you look at a place like California, when $100,000 house, $100,000 in a house in Ohio probably costs six or 700,000 in California, how do you live that way? That's the hard part. So if you like this video, please subscribe to the channel, share it with somebody, and watch our next video on how we believe recessions are actually an opportunity of a lifetime.